back to Unarmored Talk Podcast, everyone. I'm still your host, Mario P. Fields, unless I get fired by myself. I guess I can fire. I don't know how that works. You guys can fire me. You guys are the audience, the listeners and viewers. So you can say, Mario, you, you're horrible. You need to go away. But thank you. Before we get to an amazing guest, I say that every episode, but this one's a little different. Everyone, Dr. Jennifer James, just so you guys know, she is the principal of Innovation Early College High School. She is the one that allowed me to build the concept of Still Serving Incorporated around that school in 2018. And every time you share, watch, you like, you subscribe, you make a comment, and all those those charitable dollars that have been generated from my YouTube channel and the Apple Podcasts and Listen Notes and all the audio stuff, they all been pretty much donated to support what Dr. James and her team is doing in Pitt County, North Carolina. If it wasn't for you, Dr. James, I don't believe still serving would be where it's at. Dr. James, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the, the positive comments. We've definitely worked together the last uh, six years and I've grown and you've grown and our organizations have grown too. So it's been, it's been pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Got, she didn't even have students, everyone. I, you know, I didn't even have a website and Dr. James didn't even have students. I'm like, Hey, you mind if I built this and I'm in California. And she took a chance on me. So, yeah. um, so again, thank you. But everyone, she's, again, the principal of Innovation Early College High School. She stood that school up from scratch in 2018. It is a partnership between Pitt County Schools and East Carolina University. Go Pirates. Go Purple and go, baby. And we are a pirate family here in the Fields household. And, again, don't forget to share, subscribe, leave some comments. Let's keep going to year number 24. You know what I mean? Let's do this forever if we can. Let's get right to our amazing guest, Dr. James. Can you please tell uh, the listeners and viewers just a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, Dr. Jennifer James, I, as Mario said, I am the principal of Innovation Early College High School. Um, I've been here, this is my sixth year, and I did start it um, from scratch. We're a partnership with East Carolina University, but I am a Pitt County School employee. I have been with Pitt County Schools Oh, I think 16, 16 years. Um, I am in my 11th year as a principal. Um, prior to that, I was an assistant principal um, at a high school, North Pitt High School, which is real close to where I live in like the rural part of um, Pitt County Schools. And before that, I was an exceptional children's teacher. So I taught students in special education program. Um, in the occupational course of study. So students that had um, mild to moderate intellectual disabilities or had um, severe emotional behaviors. So I did that for four and a half years. And before that, I was in the business world. So I did not come to teaching directly through college. I have a degree uh, in management information systems. Um, so a business administration uh, degree with a focus in management information systems. And then when I went back to school um, to get my MSA, so master's in school administration, it was through the principal fellow program. So it was a scholarship program. Um, so I went back to school, got my MSA, and then just recently, last May, finished my doctoral program. Um, so have my doctorate in school administration, curriculum and instruction, and also have my superintendent's license. Um, and all three of those degrees are from East Carolina University. So I'm a pirate at heart. All my uh, education has been through ECU, so I'm very familiar with the campus and the culture of East Carolina University. Well, well, you know, everyone, you're hearing all these amazing accomplishments. And oh, by the way, in 2023, uh, Dr. James was out of a, a large group of principals in Pitt County. Dr. James was selected as the 2023 Pitt County Schools Teacher, I mean, I'm sorry, Principal um, of the Year. So you you're hearing all of these accomplishments, but let's jump into the journey. From my basic understanding, Dr. James, from childhood, you had a lot of things uh, stacked against you, per se, that it was your resilience and some other things that allowed, that created these opportunities. Talk to us a little bit about that beginning in Wake County. <laughs> sure. Um 
So I have an older sister. Um, her name is Nicole. She's four years older than me. And then it was myself. Um, my parents were together until I was six years old. So um, wasn't the best relationship between them growing up. So I, I don't feel like I ever really saw what, you know, a loving um, happy marriage should look like. I didn't grow up in that in that type of environment. Um, so at six years old, they they got divorced. We had to decide where to go. And it was a, a bit of a forced decision. Um, my mom, God rest her soul, she died about 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say she did the best she could with what she had. And it took me a very long time to get to that place, right? Um, probably maybe in my forties before I could get to the place to say that. Um, but growing up, she just, she just didn't really know how to be a very loving, comforting, um, emotionally available mother. Um, and so when it came time for the divorce to happen, it was almost like an ultimatum was given to my older sister that we had to go with her. We couldn't go with my dad. So we ended up going with my mom. And so mental, emotional, physical abuse ensued, you know, from the time I was, I don't, I can't really remember exactly when it started because when you go through trauma like that, you tend to block out a lot of things, like it falls into a dark abyss. Um, but some of my earliest memories were, you know, emotional, mental, or physical abuse from my mom. So we ended up at six going with her and stayed with her for a while. And then like a lot of kids in divorced families, you end up going back and forth. I don't like it here. I'm going to go to my dad's. I don't like it here. He has too many rules. I'm going back to my mom's. So I did that for a bit um, until I just, at 12 years old, I think I really realized what was happening with my mom and it just was not a safe space. Um, you know, on top of not being able to be emotionally available, she was an alcoholic as well. Um, so that contributed to a lot of what was going on with her. So right. she'd get drunk pretty much every night and we would be exposed to that. So at 12, I decided, you know what, I'm going to stay settled with my dad. So by eighth grade, which is when I was 12 years old, I had moved 11 times between her and my dad. And then she moved a lot because we got evicted out of houses. Um, frequently she lived paycheck to paycheck, um, you know, so it was just a difficult time for sure. Um, so I stayed with my dad, went to a new school in middle school, um, Fuqua Verena, and eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade were very difficult for me because I was the new kid on the block, right? Mm. All of the kids had been together really since kindergarten. And here comes this new girl. Here she comes. Yep. So I got picked on a lot, girls and boys. Um, and that ensued, you know, into, into high school some. So it was just really hard for me to find my group because I felt like I was an outsider. And my self-esteem and self-confidence was already so destroyed because of how I mm. grew up, right? I lived with you're stupid in the back of my mind for forever, like wow. as long as I can remember. Um, and so now you've got kids your age picking on you, giving you a hard time. And so you're further believing the negative things that are going on in your mind and that have been said to you prior to. Um, so yeah, fast forward, graduated high school, you know, and I had some friends and they were awesome. Went to actually went to ECU with one of my good friends, um, had a great time in college. Like college is where I really started to bloom and kind of find myself. Um, really shouldn't have gotten into college. Um, my SAT score is so low. I, I won't tell people the score. <laughs> Like I'm that embarrassed by it. Right? We, we, we say you got the results back and it was negative 30. <laughs> Wasn't negative 30, but it was low. Um, so I'm surprised that yeah. any college accepted me, but ECU did. They accepted me. So it was the first school to accept me. So I was like, I'm out of here. So I came to ECU um, and ended up majoring in business, found my group of friends, found um, a really great partner, boyfriend that I was with for several years. And he um, helped me understand about like going inside and doing the work of like figuring out what had gone on in my life right. and, you know, turned me on to some different self-help books and things like that. So I started discovering like, oh yeah, I've got some stuff I need to deal with. Mm -hmm. So that was my first awakening um, to 
knowing that I had things to deal with. Um, so that was in college. I actually moved in with my mother after I graduated college because I didn't have a job. I didn't have anywhere to go. I didn't know what I was going to do. So that was really interesting. So I hadn't lived with her. I'd gone and seen her, but we were kind of estranged for a while. Um, so when I'm 20, 21, yeah, it took me six and a half years to graduate college, but I graduated. And that's um, with the bachelor's. Yeah. I changed wow. my major a couple of times um, and I paid for my own school. Um, so I worked jobs. I paid for my own college. Um, wow. I actually paid off those loans in 2018. It took forever, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think because I paid for it on my own, I changed my major. I was working. It just took me a bit longer to graduate, but I graduated. Right. But I went back and lived with her. And stayed with her for a couple of months and, you know, being an adult and seeing all of the things, she wasn't as um, emotionally and mentally abusive. She definitely wasn't physically abusive at that point, but she just wasn't available, right? She just wasn't mom material, not what yeah. I would have sought out in a mom, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so I had an opportunity to move to San Francisco. And my first thought was, I have to get as far away from these people as I possibly can. And so I packed my car up with $700 and drove across country. $700 to San Fran. Like you're, you're buying some groceries and that's it. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. So I went there and wow. stayed there for a year, went to Florida for a year, just enjoyed seeing the world, um, traveled some, getting different perspectives from different people. And then I met my husband and that's where everything really shifted for me. Wow. Um, ended up coming back to Eastern North Carolina. I thought I'd never come back here, but that's where he was from. Um, we've been married 20 years. This past April was 20 years. Congratulations. He, thank you. He was the person that like believed in me so hard like no one has ever believed in me the way that Bert James has. And he helped me understand the potential that I had, although it might've been buried deep down, you know, because I couldn't see it. Right. Because I have all of these negative thoughts like, Oh, you can't do that. Or you're not smart enough, or that's not something you could do. So I had all the negative loops going on in my brain, but he helped me understand the power that I had within me and that I could be whatever I wanted to be. And so he just spoke life over me. He's done it for 20 years. So this was at 27 that I met him and he started doing that. And so I came around to like fully believing it into my thirties. And I mean, I really, I don't want to say hold him responsible, but he's really responsible for how I view myself now. So we got into church, you know, and so I became more connected. I had been to church on and off throughout my life, but like mm -hmm. definitely more connected to God and understanding like that whole relationship. Um, and then just knowing that I have somebody that's in my corner and believes in me. Um, and you you know what's interesting, Dr. James, you know, listening to you and talk, and, and, and first of all, I applaud again. Uh, your amazing husband and uh and and i don't just say congratulations like it's a check in the box for 20 years of matrimony i've done some research <laughs> people mar being married is not common these days right. for that long but but what's cool for me no getting to know you and having discussions without armor today on this show how i see you show those students at innovation early college high school that all they need is one person to believe in them and I've yeah. seen you, I've seen you do it, but I never knew the background behind it. And yeah. it's cool to see how you went through your journey and how you found one person, that one person that from their heart believed in you and how I can see it as a, as a spectator in the bleachers, watching you pour that back in. What, uh, what uh, how many students have come through Innovation Early College since 2018? Now what, four or 500? I don't know. You know what's the, yeah, what's the I've world? got I've got two hundred and um we got two hundred and eighteen now and we've had two groups of students yeah. graduate and about forty five in each group yeah yeah so a few hundred and so I just wanted pause real quick because that that's just impressive how you had a choice 
right? You could have used your upbringing as a crutch, the divorce and everything, the emotional negative energy, the thoughts, the, the, the low self-esteem. You could have chose not to self-reflect. You could say, you know what? This is life. These are the cars that were dealt to me, that metaphor. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, I'm just going to be just like everyone else in my family. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Wow. Well, it... So I... I don't know at what point I began thinking this, but might have been in college or a little bit after, but I knew I wanted to break the generational curse, right? Mm -hmm. So my mom's father wasn't the best to her. His mother wasn't the best to him. And who knows how far it went back. I don't know my whole story because I'm not, you know, that super connected with my family like that. But there's a generational cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So at some point, I knew I wanted to break the generational cycle. It's so important. Like I did not want to abuse my child. So I, I did not. I worked super hard to take care of my son, who's now 14. And he's a fantastic right. kid and he knows he's loved. You know, he's just a total different experience than what I had. But that thought of breaking negative cycles is a huge part of what we do at Innovation Early College High School. It's part of our belief statement that the staff decided um you know, I thought it was great because it's what I wanted them to decide, but they decided on their own that they felt like it was really important to teach our kids how to break negative cycles. Mm -hmm. And that can be a generational cycle. It can be a negative thought pattern in your brain, right? I'm not a good math student. I'll never be a good math student. I've never done math well. And then you come here and you start doing math well. So you break that cycle. So tons of examples of what that mm. could look like, but that's a huge part of what we do here is working to break these negative cycles that our students have come accustomed to through what, just life, you know, through home life, through school life, social life, um, internet, social media, you know, they're just a lot of negative cycles that they go through. Um, yeah. And so it's a huge part of what we do. And I do believe if you can have one person in your corner to cheer you on and to help you see yourself in a way that maybe you've never thought you could see yourself. So like a positive way of seeing myself that the sky's the limit. And so that's right. right. That's what I do for my kids because I know the power in that. And and Dr. James, I see it. And, and you know, the, so, so the interesting thing is and you guys heard earlier, uh, you know, you, you weren't always in education. You know, you're right. You had a business degree, kind of did business. So here you are in your 30s. You meet this amazing, amazing man, by the way. Uh, next day, if I, you know, if I ever get a chance to see him in person, I'm going to make sure I give him some uh, nice beverages and a red carpet, uh, <laughs> seven star. I give him a massage too, you know, take care of him. But here you are in your 30s. And 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 you got kind of this business focus. At what point did you switch from this business industry to student education? Yeah. So I'll back up just a little bit. So when I was at ECU, I took some education classes um, mm. and then I turned 21 and I just I was not ready. I knew I was like, I'm not ready to influence kids right now. Right. <laughs> I mean. I was at ECU, which was one of the top party schools, according to um, Playboy. So, you know, 21, it just wasn't time. So I, that's when I changed my major to business. But mm -hmm. I've so I always had it in the back of my mind. I never knew I'd come back to it. I had a friend um, who was an assistant principal at Southwest Edgecombe, and he knew that background, right? They were looking for an exceptional children's teacher. And at the time... Oh, I was running a pizza restaurant. Jesus help me. At love wait, for wait, all wait. the people running restaurants wait, that is a hold, hard job. Hold on, Dr. James. You was running <laughs> a see, that's why I like this show, man. You was running a pizza restaurant. Yeah. So I should change the title. <laughs> my father-in-law and his two brothers they were in the farming industry and it was um, around the time that the tobacco buyout was happening and so they wanted a way to diversify their portfolio because mm. the tobacco buyout right that was their huge you know crop that they were growing so they decided to buy a pizza restaurant and they knew I had a business background so before that I was renting cars at Enterprise Rent-A-Car so my business degree did a lot for me at that time um 
So I was like, yeah, I'm pretty done renting cars. So yeah, I'll try it. I've worked in the restaurant industry, you know, all through college. I never managed a restaurant, but I thought with my business degree and customer service skills, I could do it right. So I did it for a year. Very difficult job. Kudos to anyone that does it because you are always on call. Somebody doesn't show up. You have to go. You're dealing with the customers. I mean, it's just constant, constant. And you smell like pizza all the time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a separate drawer for my clothes because they smelled so bad. It didn't matter how many times you washed them, you smelled like pizza all the time. But that's beside the point. So I was doing that. And my friend was like, aren't you sure? You know, you sure you don't want to do education? I was like, well, let me pray about it. Because I knew working with exceptional children had its own challenges outside of teaching. Teaching's challenging anyway, but I knew that that was, could be challenging too. So I prayed about and prayed about it and decided it was the right move. So I went, um, got the job under an emergency certification. So I wasn't even certified to be a teacher. So I went back to school while I was learning to teach, got my certification in a year and a half to be a teacher um, from, I think it was Edgecombe Community College. Um, there classes there and classes at ECU. So got my certification to be an exceptional children's teacher while I was teaching. So it was a friend that knew I had some classes and went out on a limb and was like, we really need a teacher. And I think that you might do good. And so I did. And that wow. was the start. Yeah, that was the start of, of my teaching career. So I and stayed with him for a year and a half and then went to North Pitt. You know, the power of a network, the power of people in your network, just the variety, like a mutual fund, a variety of people in your network that that can really propel you to things that you didn't even think about or maybe you considered. And from from that point to, to 2023, Pitt County Schools, principal of the year, roughly, do you know how many principals? I don't even know how roughly, I mean, a rough number, how many principals? There, I think there's 36 of us in Pitt County. And so you nominate, um, you get nominated from the pool of the 36 principals. Yeah. What an amazing journey. You know, Dr. James, I know you are doing amazing things at Innovation Early College High School today. And you know, you and I are partners anyway. I will talk to you forever without even realizing what time it is. But you guys, you guys heard from Dr. James. I wish we had more time, but you guys know how the show goes. I don't like to take too much time from the guests who are, are having fun doing the things they love. If you, uh, looking back, if you had to give one tip to any student, any, any adult, anyone that is in uh, a situation where their self-esteem is low, maybe the, the environment is not conducive, you know, maybe they just don't believe in themselves because there's no one in their corner, if you will. What what piece of advice could you could you give them? Wow, that's a big question. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I want to say find somebody that's in your corner that can help you see um, the goodness that you have, but sometimes it's hard to find that person, right? Like you might not have that person. It might not be a friend or anyone at school or in your family. So I think, um, you know, something that, that you could do is really think about what are the positive things that you have going for yourself? Because everybody mm -hmm. has positive things going for themselves. It could be, you know, in relation to, your health and wellness and exercising. It could be you're kind to other people. It could be I'm good at math, you know, whatever the things are that you are good at. And I think you write those down, you put, you know, you develop affirmations from that, put them on your mirror and you start speaking that to yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm good at math. I'm a great mathematician. My math skills will help me in the future. Or I'm kind to people. I am compassionate. People are compassionate to me. And so I think when you start speaking positivity over your own self in your own life, you're going to manifest more of the positivity. Um, so if you don't have someone else that's helping you do that, that's helping speak that positivity to you, um, you got to generate it on your own. You've got to dig deep, peel back the layers. You can find one positive thing about yourself. I absolutely promise you can. And you put it on a note, stick it on your mirror, and you speak it to yourself every day. And then more positivity will start coming to your mind about yourself. Um, so I think that's the piece of advice that I would I would give someone. You have to be the conduit and you have to start speaking kindly to yourself. 
Dr. James, I love it. I mean, I'm just listening to you and it just remind me of when I was even growing up in school and I didn't grow, man. I'm like, why <laughs> is everyone growing? But me, that I, like you said, I, you know, you even made me self-reflect on this show. I was, and I had to start thinking, Mario, it's okay to be short. You're better, you know, look at your smile. So whatever. Yeah. Dr. James, you guys heard the tips. I love it. Everything starts with you. Start, find things about yourself. Fall in love with yourself, if you will, and yeah. speak it into existence. I love how you said, write it down, everyone. Write it down. Research has proven that if you write things down, you increase the probability of success in achieving your own, own goals. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate you. And everyone, if you guys want to read the article, go on www.stillservinginc.com. Latest news. And there's a wonderful article that our team put together in regards to Dr. James and her prestigious award that she got last October. Dr. James, please be safe and we'll be in, in contact soon, okay? Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, you guys know the deal. God bless you. God bless your families and God bless your friends. We'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye, Dr. James.